Hey everyone, it's JPC again, and this is episode number 10 uh, for Back in My Day. This week I want to talk about communication, uh, moving into the after hours segment of um, Boomer to Diamond. I was given a pre-round routine, and I found kind of a huge shift in how prepared I feel before rounds after starting it. And it's really all about communication, and I'll kind of go into that a little bit, but it felt really topical to make that this week's topic. Um, if you're enjoying the content, obviously, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot. gives me a little virtual pat on the back, as always. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, here's some caveats. Um, my biggest issue is I'm not great at communicating. Um, it's actually been a struggle of mine in a lot of parts of my life. Um, so... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that, but it must be stated that I'm just I'm just not great at it, and I know uh, I know what my struggle is, and I've kind of compensated with um, with those struggles. I do want to talk about that, so that'll be a part of uh, what I discuss a little bit later. Additionally, I will throw out there that there are some challenges that come with communicating that I cannot even begin to make suggestions around. Um, I don't even know what I would do if I was in those experience, if I had those experiences my, uh, in myself, right? Um, I'll, I'll give an example is kind of the harassment that female players get when they try to common games. Um, it's extremely unfortunate that anyone has to deal with that. But if I was in a similar scenario, I probably would just also not calm, right? Like, I, I don't know that I would have a good suggestion, but I also, I, I can't fathom being in that scenario. Um, with it so um the co commentary that kind of follows is more general and definitely not for everyone um because again i've never been in those situations so one i'm sorry that anybody has to deal with that but two um this may not be the best for those type of situations all right let's get into it um i want to start off uh kind of talking about factors of communication. Uh, I think a lot of people know these things, but it's kind of a, a little bit of a refresher. So um, let's talk about uh, clarity, positivity, respect, awareness, and uh, tools uh, for that. So for clarity, um, one of the things I like to kind of talk about is, uh, this is actually one of, one of my struggles. I'll talk about it uh, in a little bit when I go over my, my flaws, but clarity is... Um, uh, it's conciseness as well, but the the idea that I'm doing it right now, um, I'm I'm struggling to get across what I want to even say about clarity. Right? Uh, is that on purpose? I don't know. You guys decide. Um, understanding that there is a, a good way and a bad way to kind of communicate, and with clarity, um, like don't ramble, don't use jargon. Um, figure out the calls, uh, the callouts. Um, make sure that your team understands. Um, don't say, actually, Hujin talks about this a lot. Don't say he's on me because your team might not know who me is. There is a lot of uh, clarity issues with that. Um, and I think this comes with practice. This is something that, uh, while it's a struggle of mine, um, because relatively, uh, how do I say this? I would say I'm relatively new still at calming within Valorant. So there are callouts that I miss, uh, especially in the heat of, of communication. Um, there are, uh, I call out the wrong agent. I'll tell a story again later when I go into my flaws of clarity uh, at times. Um, so I think I think it's it's straightforward, but it is something that I think is easy to deal with via practice. Um, one of the, the practices that Wahoochin talks about is the DM drill where you're just calling everything out, uh, the location and the enemy that you see. And if you kill them, you say that you killed them. Uh, if you don't, you say how much damage you did to them um, uh, at the time. So, But it's in the middle of the fight, not afterwards. So it's a, it's, I think it's something that can be practiced. Clarity is, especially in gaming, clarity is something that just takes time to figure out um, the way to do it, but you have to constantly do it. You have to be practicing it um, uh, for that to come through. So uh, positivity. So one of the things that everyone talks about is toxicity in Valorant or toxicity in games in general and having to deal with those things. Um, the only thing you can do to deal with toxicity is to be the positive example 
um, that you want everyone else to be, right? So that's kind of the the uh, the special case here, right? And again, don't hesitate to mute people. I'm not saying don't do those things, but um, I na- I always give everyone a chance. Um, I always provide an opportunity for someone to be positive or to at least not be negative because that's okay as well. Um, but that's the drive there. And if if somebody's negative on your team and you can be positive, you can overcome that positivity for your teammates, especially if it's to somebody else. Um, this is one thing that I'm not going to talk about later, but I, I was playing a game the other day and, and I was getting uh, reamed by my, I was bottom fragging and I was getting reamed by my teams because I, because I made a decision that ended up not being the best one. And my team was asking me why I made that choice. And like, we were already down. Like, I think we we're like, nine to 12 or something and i was like guys like i'm like that one play is not the reason that we're about to lose game here like that with that the other teams at game point and uh the guy responded with like yeah but you can't take your 50s or something you can't win your 50s i don't remember and somebody on my team spoke up and was just like why are you guys being so toxic here and then they just all turned on him and i was relieved to not have to deal with it but also I kind of just let them go at that guy. Um, I muted them eventually. And I don't know what all was continued. He said, but I was just like, I said my piece and I went and he kind of stood up for me. So, you know, L teammate there from, from my side, but um, that's a, that's a big deal. And I could have like, I, I could have you know quelled maybe it a little bit. I could have, maybe even said my piece, like I'm not the reason that we're losing this game right here. Like my, like me alone. Um, there are ways to use positivity to overcome toxicity, but at the end of the day, just muting bad people or toxic people is okay as well. Um, you need to be positive over the long term. You don't need to be positive in every single uh, situation that you're in. Uh, respect. So uh, it goes back without saying, right? You should respect everybody. And again, I have this kind of like, theory um principle a principle we'll call it a principle um i joke around about it it's that people talk about the golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated well i have kind of an inversion of that which is i assume people are treating me the way that they want to be treated um it's the also golden rule and so if somebody is respectful to me i will absolutely be respectful to them i have no problem with that and i don't have an ego kind of when it comes to those things um, I would never tell somebody that they're bad, that they're playing terribly, that they're, it doesn't matter. Um, I want to make sure that people understand that they're, they're respected um, uh, when, when, we're, when we're playing, whatever. Uh, but the moment somebody becomes toxic to me, like I want to become toxic back to them. That is a, a, a problem that I have. Um, and all kind of respect, it goes out the window. So it's something I can work on, but uh, at the end of the day, like, don't blame people. Like, assume positive intent. Nobody goes into the game wanting to troll. And I know that's not a hundred percent true, but in general, we should assume that when somebody joins a game with us, that everybody is trying to win and trying to do their best. And I think that's the most respectful thing that you can do. It's so, uh, again, assume positive intent. And then there's awareness of surroundings. So. Um, just be aware, right? If you're in the middle of a game and you die, just shut up. Um, you can provide comms for like, you know, to to or be main, blah, 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 whatever type of thing. But stop talking about your skin collection. Stop talking about what happened last round. Stop talking. Like, it doesn't matter. Just let your team play out the match. Provide the um, good communication. But don't come. Um, th- no ghost comms. Just... Be respectful of that and be aware of your surroundings. Um, I actually hear about Hujin constantly even calm things like, I'm reloading, cover me. Um, that's that's huge too. That's a different kind of awareness of surroundings, right? Like uh, I'm very bad at this and recognizing that I'm with somebody. Um, I'm starting to, you know, hey, Soba, I'm with you. Um, hey, Reina, bait me. Uh, she was going to bait me anyway. But anyway, um uh, so like kind of awareness of those surroundings, like that's huge for one side of it, which is to make sure that your team knows that you're with them or that you have a plan in front of you. So be aware of those surroundings, but also be aware of the fact that like 
your team needs quiet sometimes. And if you're dead, um, if you're not providing effective communication, then, you know, shut up as it is. Uh, and then the right tool. So uh, at the end of the day, use your, your mic. If you don't have a mic, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like um, there are many s scenarios that I think people just don't have mics, can't afford them, things like that. Those things kind of suck, but I'm not going to read text chat while I'm playing. I, I, I'm just not. I it, it doesn't. It does not, um, it's not effective. It takes my eyes away from the screen. Um, it requires me to not focus on the my crosshair placement or mini map. Uh, so it's just an extra place for me to put my eyes and I'm already terrible at all those other things. So uh, I, I don't read text chat. So I feel like that's a big deal uh, in terms of tools. Um, uh, it, it's frustrating, but you're effectively, I would say, you're probably better off not comming than to type things in text chat in all reality um, uh, at the end of the day. Um, pinging the, uh, the minimap, doing things like danger or uh, the, other, the other options for the, um, the radio wheel. Um, honestly, like use them. Start using them more. Be, be helpful with the pinging. Uh, use the tools. Uh, find any way possible to um, point out uh, enemy locations and or places for smokes and things like that. So use your tools. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, I think those are the uh, the main factors. Uh, again, clarity, uh, positivity, respect, awareness, uh, and tools. And I think they're pretty straightforward, but we often kind of lose sight of those things as we're, you know, quote unquote, learning. Um, the other thing, yeah, I'll bring it up now. So um, if you're working on one of these things, um, I implore you to record and VOD review. Um, I'm going to talk again a little bit about my uh, kind of my flaws or my um, losses and my wins when it comes to communication and what I'm kind of doing around it. But don't hesitate to VOD review um, your communication. Um, for the clarity aspect, I'll kind of use that because it's something I'm I'm working on. But watch back your game and see how clear and concise you were during your game, and then create uh, um, action plans to fix those things. Um, sometimes, again, it's just maybe play DM and calm out your DMs. Uh, that's really helpful. Sometimes it's um, learning the um, mini map. Sometimes it's just taking a breath real quick before you calm because calming within one second with a bad calm is worse than waiting three seconds to provide the good calm. Um, so uh, again, that was more of a clarity thing. I think the other ones, but you can listen to your tone. Uh, you can ask somebody to review your calms and provide feedback about your respect or your positivity if it's something you can't be objective about. And that's possible. There's a lot of people who don't know how they sound. Um, there's also uh, recognizing things like cultural differences. Um, for example, I have a friend uh, who's Russian and they are very direct. And everybody that um, I know that they know uh, originally thought that they were just extremely rude. And it's not a rudeness factor. Um, and don't get me wrong, I like I was like, bro, like <laughs> that was a little, that was a little extra. Um, but Re explaining that to them hey like you're just you're very direct and, and i don't want to tell him to sugarcoat or to um take something away from from who he is but stating something in the form of a question shouldn't sound like a um a, a moment of, of being berated um so just ask for help it, it, it's okay to ask for help uh, in those aspects as well all right, so the my wins and my losses. So, so actually, I want to talk a little bit about what I struggle with, um, and recognizing those and kind of what I'm doing about them. Um, some of them are recent, so just literally doing this routine. Um, for background, um, and clarity for anyone who doesn't know. So right now, my pre-round routine, which is my current only focus when I play, um, for the first part of after hours, is to create a pre-round routine, which right now is I take a deep breath. Um, this is something that, 
well, hold on. I'll go into that in a second. So I take a deep breath. I check the economy. Um, uh, that includes and should include uh, kind of the status of ultimates and how close people are to ultimates. Um, if uh, the enemy might be fighting for an orb or we should be fighting for an orb. So economy is, is, um, is the first check. The second check is where my team is. So after I check that, I kind of look and see on the minimap, where is my team gone? And then I build a plan for myself and then I communicate that plan. Um, all of those things are extremely easy until it got to communicating a plan. Um, there are times where I couldn't come up with a plan because I need playbooks for that, but the communicating a plan was, was extremely difficult. Um, so uh, kind, of, kind of putting that out there, um, wait, where was I going with that? I think that, oh, so um, before I go into the wins and losses, the reason that I chose breathing um, as my, I guess, trigger, right? I guess that's what we used uh, the term for was a trigger. So the trigger for the pre-run routine. The reason that I chose breathing is uh, whenever I played sports, I was never somebody that needed to be hyped up. I didn't need to listen to, you know, whatever music people listen to. I had friends who listened to like metal or some listen to a rap or, or, or whatnot. Um, I can't think of their other genres that people would listen to outside of kind of those, maybe like some type of rock or, or punk, maybe. Anyway, ignore me. I'm a boomer. Um, I never needed that. I needed to be centered. Um, my adrenaline was already high going in and I was already um, uh, kind of um, lit, I guess, when it, when it came to it. And um, I learned this early on when I played back when I played ultimate Frisbee that I needed to get away from the, the group um, before each game. And I needed to um, essentially meditate so this breathing um I'm, i kind of stole it from um a, a baseball player right now so Raphael devers actually i don't think he's doing it this year but up until this year Raphael devers who i believe got it from jd martinez um who is now on the dodgers but Raphael devers would uh step out of the batter's box um between pitches or even going into the batter box before the before the first pitch he would drop his arms to his sides, close his eyes, take a deep breath, and then blow it out very quickly. And then he would reset and then step into the batter's box. So that's why I chose to do this. But I was thinking about it back in the day, um, pun intended, um, when I played Ultimate Frisbee, I would do it at the beginning of the tournament. So we would play multiple games, um, but I would step away from the team and I would um is pseudo meditate i try to to calm down and i would actually listen to like very soft gentle music whenever we were warming up to try to prevent that so um it's something i've always kind of wanted to do and i think kind of has always been a part of my personality and then finding um trying to decide what my trigger would be while i was watching actually watching a baseball game and i i saw rafael devers do it and i was like yeah, yeah i think i think that's what i want to do um so that's where that comes from so the problem is, is doing this routine, I have figured out that there are some flaws that I have when it comes to communication, and I'm going to have to work through those. Uh, so clarity. So I brought it up earlier, and I'm going to talk about it now. So clarity is a, a problem of mine. Um, so I'll give a couple of examples. Even today on stream. So it's Sunday. I played a game um, on Wuhan stream this morning, and um, there were three mid, and they were pushing up male. And I was playing B heaven and I backed away and said three B. Um, so in an attempt to be concise, instead of saying three mid pushing B heaven, I <laughs> shrunk that down to three B. Um, and the, the call was a hundred percent wrong um, because of that. So there is a trade off between conciseness and clarity that I have at times. Um, that especially in the middle of kind of um, chaos uh, that I lose. And that's something that I think over time I'll figure out, but I have to actively um, do that. So I'll point out the only reason I know that is because I went back and every time I play on stream, um, I go back and I rewatch it. I, I try to VOD review my games always. Um, so I went back and I watched and I actually saw that, that situation. And I was like, yeah, that's a shit comp. I can't believe that that came out of my mouth. Um, I was playing another game the other day on Heaven 
we pushed B and there were two people alive. There was a Sova and there was a KJ. And Sova ulted and KJ threw a Molly. And I mixed them up. I said Sova was on A and KJ was on C. Um, and right afterwards, somebody died to the KJ uh, and um, coming from A because it said that they were, yeah, they were on the other side. Yeah. And they just started berating me about the bad comm. And I was like, one was on A and one was on C. Like, yeah, I get it. But at the end of the day, he's not wrong, right? Um, while I did say one was A and one was C, I explicitly said who was A and who was C. Um, and that call was incorrect. Um, and it was because I was in the middle of um, of a fight. I was in the middle of, a, of, a, of chaos. And I tried to be concise. And I was not clear while trying to do so. So that is a, a major struggle of mine. Um, and I'll only fix that via VOD review. And again, I think taking a moment to provide the correct comm. Um, so another one here, I guess. I've listed short leash. Um, I mentioned earlier about kind of my inverted golden rule. Uh, I don't give a lot of leeway there. Um, the moment somebody is being rude to me or to somebody else and I just don't want to listen to it, I'll, I'll mute them. Um, uh, I don't think that... Uh, Actually, what Hooj and I were talking about this, and I kind of said, I just like, okay, I'm muting you now. And um, he he very correctly kind of stated that's a, that's like a middle school kind of um, getting the last word in type of thing. And yeah, he's 100% right. It does feel like that times when I do it. Like, I'm like, hey, hey I'm muting you. Um, and then I mute them and, and don't let them kind of get a word back into me. But it's because I have a short lease and I don't want to deal with it. But it, as well as, I obviously, I want to get the last word in that's who I am. Um, so that's one thing that uh, I think I have to figure out how to, I have to lengthen that leash a little bit um, to, to figure out how to uh, give people uh, more of a chance to uh, provide, um, uh, I guess, comms with me. And lastly, uh, I listed here uh, imperfect options. So, the reason that I put in perfect options is uh, I'm always kind of looking for the best plan for where I'm at. Um, I know I don't know enough to make the best plan, but I'm always trying to concoct the best scenario for what I know and where I'm at. And because of that, um, I get kind of in my head and... I'm thinking, 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 and not talking, talking, talking. So it's one of my, one of my problems, um, right? Good and done is better than perfect. Uh, it needs to be something that I'm focusing on um, with that. And I think that's going to be fixed a little bit with this routine. Um, and it'll definitely be fixed with more playbooks that kind of get added um, to my arsenal. And watching pro plays, um, Watching pros play ranked, um, even watching pro games, I think will help a little bit and kind of understanding this is an option. This is something you can do. Um, most of my plans right now are you go one of the mains and I'll go mid, right? Or something like that. Let's control X. So they're very um, limited on details. Uh, and I think that's something that'll come as I, again, continue practicing it via VOD reviews. All right, so I want to switch over to things that I feel like I'm good at. Um, things that uh, I see as being beneficial. Um, so again, there may be things that I'm, be I'm better at than what I'm going to list here, but these are, I guess, my favorite things that I do. So um, I have a habit of repeating things in game. Um, I don't do it all the time, but there are times where I will say, um, you know, 130 to raise, 130 to raise, and just repeat that line. Um, it's something that I learned from playing sports, um, giving the call and then giving the call a second time um, allows for anyone who didn't hear the beginning of the call to potentially hear it, right? Because they're in the middle of the thing. So um, it's a very good thing to get into within reason, of course. Um, explaining your detailed plan pre-round and then having to say that whole detailed plan pre-round Probably is not a good thing to repeat, but, um, you know, she was last secret. She was last secret uh, and kind of thing. So 
there's benefit to repeating and it's something I naturally do. Even in, like when I start the, the game, I immediately like, hello, hello. How's everyone's day going? Um, and I'll repeat those things. Um, uh, kind of a weird habit that I've always had and it, it tends to be beneficial for uh, communication within uh, chaotic scenarios. Positivity. So um, I try to remain positive. I feel like if somebody is not having a good game, um, I kind of, you know, even if it's pure, just hyperbole, right? Oh, you're going to get an ace next round, no problem. Um, hey, it's fine. You know, the game is, uh, the outcome of the game is not important. Let's, you know, try to have fun or let's try to focus on whatever uh, um, learning or, or whatnot. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I can be generally pretty positive. It's when people are overly negative that it makes it hard for me to be positive. So, um, there's something I can learn there, but in all reality, um, positivity is not something that comes uh, difficult. That is difficult. Yeah, positivity is not something that is difficult for me um, in game, and I don't have a problem kind of uh, telling people it's okay, we got this or, or whatnot. Um, and I think that that'll just continue to grow as I get more confident in uh, kind of what we can do and, and could do uh, in different games. And then the last thing I have listed here is egoless. Um, so I don't feel like I have an ego. I definitely have an ego, but I don't feel like I have an ego in all scenarios. Um, a situation where like uh, a sage is telling me to bark in order to get it here. I don't, I don't give a shit. I'll bark. I'll, I'll bark for somebody else. Like th th that doesn't bother me. Like they are not making me less of a person by making me meow or bark or something, you know, um, I don't have a problem with those things. I was playing an Ascent game the other day and this guy was being super toxic and he asked to, uh, for me to buy him. And I, that's fine, I'll buy him. So I bought him and he immediately typed in chat, good boy. Um, things like that, like they don't bother me. Uh, you know, you're not some, you know, toxic stepfather who needs to feel uh, inferior or uh, superior to me and then therefore makes me feel inferior, but no, I don't, I, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything to me. So I don't have a problem with that. I think that, I don't know if that's an age thing. I don't know if that's, um, it's a video game thing, but I wasn't always that way, but I have noticed like I, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll bark for a heel. If it's, the, if you need, if you need me to pay you in some, uh, artificial currency, that is me barking so you feel better about the role you selected. Whatever, that's fine. Um, so I think that's something that that is uh, it, it's it's easy to navigate uh, when it comes down to it. But okay, so kind of listing those things out, I think that VOD review for the the challenges, right? The clarity, the short lease, the imp imperfect options. If I selected one of those things and just reviewed a match those things would be easily identified. And um, while I may not be able to fix the, I don't know what is the best plan here thing via VOD review, um, VOD reviewing other things. Uh, again, the, the watching the, the pro matches or watching pro players play ranked and seeing the way that they kind of set up, play, those things will help. Um, and I think that, I, I go back to it. It's a weird thing to suggest, but VOD reviewing your comms is viable and actually extremely helpful. You don't even have to watch the gameplay. You can not watch the game at all, just put it on a different um, screen, put it behind something and listen. Um, you know, within reason, of course, you know, did you see Reyna, but you said Ray's, sure. Those things probably need to be monitored and watched, but for the most part, uh, it's very, very effective. And it's actually been really fun to just VOD review the pre-rounds. They they go very quickly. <laughs> um, did I breathe? Did I check my econ? Sweet. Did I look at my teammates? I assume that it's happened. I don't have a way to validate that. Um, and then did I come up with a plan and communicate the plan? Um, super simple, very easy to do. So the clarity thing, super simple. Was I clear and was I concise? Um, and I think it's just valid. It's something that if you've never done and it's something you want to work on, VOD review is a good option. All right, so the last thing here is a kind of like extra things um, that I wanna throw out. 
So active listening. I want to talk about active listening and I want to talk about smiling when you speak. So uh, active listening, in general, active listening is more of when somebody's talking to you face to face, you're nodding your head along, you're somewhat repeating uh, the things that they're saying. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, interjecting. Okay, I get that. Oh yeah, I understand that. I, I, I get your meaning. You're not interrupting, but you're interjecting that you're following along. Um, so active listening. There's a whole other study of active listening and different things that kind of go into active listening. But those are the two main things. Um, if someone's talking to you and you're not nodding along, if you're just staring at them, the assumption is your brain is somewhere else. If you're not repeating uh, things periodically or uh, again interjecting with like, okay, I get that. Um, the assumption is you're not retaining it. Uh, so that's like, that's why pe if people tend to ask you, uh, does that make sense? That's not a nervous tick from the person asking or talking. That's an assumption that maybe you're not active listening, um, actively listening well enough um, or to a degree that they feel like you're retaining. So active listening is super important. Um, it makes it difficult because it's a voice call, right? No, you can't nod along with somebody. You can't, um, uh, you can interject. So, uh, so I'll kind of point that out. So the interject piece is I think what's important here. Uh, when somebody's commenting something, um, acknowledge it verbally. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Too often do I calm something and nobody says a word afterwards. And again, maybe I've been muted. That's totally fine. Maybe that's been the, 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 poor, uh, the situation up to that point. But if you want to be a good communicator, if you want to be good at communication, part of it is being good at listening. And this is that part of the, uh, of the, of the communication segment. Um, don't hesitate to say, yes, I'd like that. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Hey, maybe we do that. And can I lurk still, um, add to it, acknowledge what you heard and be active in the conversation. Um, that will make you a significantly better communicator and help the people who are actually calming, which we all want, feel like their comms are being utilized, uh, which is a benefit to everybody at the end of the day. Um, okay, smiling when you speak. So I have a, I have a background uh, in my work history that's been in call centers. Um, and this is something that has come up for, it's been years that people have talked about doing this in call centers. So um, it can help with positivity to force yourself to smile while you are calming. What this does is it puts your face, your mouth in a uh, position to immediately sound positive. And it makes it easier for people to listen to you when you are smiling. Um, it's very effective. It's useful. And again, I think that if you want to be the best communicator you can on a call that has no picture, there's no video of you, smiling while you speak can actually be a very easy way to maximize your ability to communicate, or at least for people to um, listen to your communications. So this is a little bit extra. Um, it's not a whole lot of additional detail. Um, you're always going to get your uh, party chatters, your Disco Daniels. You're going you're gonna to have these people that are talking to their teammate or their 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 party, their duo, their trio, um, and they're not listening to what you're saying in the first place. Uh, that's going to happen. Those are not things that you can fix, but what you can do is on your side of the line, be the best talker, the best communicator, the best listener that you can be, and it is good in the long run. Uh, don't get concerned by one or two games where people are negative to you for trying to do these things it's okay that should that should be a hundred percent the exception and i know i hear all the time that oh, eu is different than na i i read it in chat and i hear um Wahujin kind of respond to it um yeah okay it's possible that there's a cultural difference there but um why not try it why not do it and ignore the negativity that comes with it and find a way past that because it's been proven to be effective in some places, it probably just needs to be attempted more times um, 
to get a better feel for it. If we hang on to the negative scenarios, we will never see the positive scenarios. Um, so just try it. Just smile while you talk, be positive, um, and be an active listener. And I think that you're going to see a lot of benefit to the listening side and the responding side of communication. All right, that's it. I'm done for the week. Um, quick recap. So I kind of listed all the factors of communication, uh, the clarity, the positivity, respecting others, um, awareness of your surroundings, and using the tools. Again, I think all five of those things are things that are easily assessed just via you already know what you are and aren't like, but also VOD review. So don't hesitate if these are things that you feel like you can be better at to just record your game. You were probably already doing it in some way, shape, or form and go back and uh, check it out. How clear were you? How concise were you? Uh, how positive were you? How respectful um, do you feel like you were? Um, I went into some of my struggles and some of what I consider to be my favorite uh, communication styles that I have. And that, it, I, again, I think it would be very simple for me to VOD review these um, as I'm uh, learning to do them better. Um, the new routine, I think, is going to do some of them for me already. But the, the short leash one, the uh, thick skin, um, that's going to be something that I will have to actively work toward. It is very difficult for me to not, again, treat others how they are treating me, uh, as has been a life um, uh, kind of philosophy when it comes to people. And then the act of listening and the smiling um, kind of additional line items that I added in here at the end, I feel like those are very, very helpful. Um, and again, I think that you want to listen and you want to be as positive as possible. And those are two skills that I think can help with that. For next week, I want to go, what's the topic is motivation. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about what motivates me, um, how I stay motivated. And when things aren't kind of going well, um, how I get back to being motivated when things kind of uh, deteriorate. So a little bit of a motivation. Uh, podcast, I felt like I had some people kind of bring up how do you stay motivated um, questions, type of questions, and I uh, thought it would be something to detail down and talk about. All right, that's it for the week. Thank you all for watching and listening, and good luck in your games. Have a good one.